Where I go, Ugandan, Ugandan. <laughs> Ugandan medical doctor working in the UK. Mbalamu sizanyo basabona banyabo kula bile dinzi. Toli wawa no actually being Ugandan wasn't very cool. <laughs> so yeah. I actually teach some of my friends um Luganda. Wow. Fitting in was hard and I found that I had to find people that looked like me mm. um to feel more accepted. Just based on what my parents did mm. and it was actually by force. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sissy and I'm a Ugandan medical doctor working in the UK. And today I have another Ugandan, Ugandan medical, medical, medical doctor, doctor working, working in, in the, the UK. UK. Well, <laughs> I haven't started working yet, but... By the time you watch this video, she will have started working in the UK. There we go. So she's, so she's a Ugandan medical doctor working in the UK. And that is my intro for YouTube. I always say I'm a Ugandan medical doctor working in the UK. But um, the topic of this video is identity. Mm. and. I never felt like a Ugandan. Like obviously I was a Ugandan, but I never used Ugandan as one of like my major things descriptive until words. exactly yeah. as one of my descriptive words until I came to the UK. Mm. And um, for me, it's because I don't know, it just didn't seem like it was normal life. It was natural. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But now everywhere I go, Ugandan, Ugandan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always singing Uganda. In of fact, course. even before anyone asks me, I'm very forward with it. I lead with Uganda and mm -hmm. I'm a Ugandan medical doctor. Mm -hmm. But um, that only happened when I came here. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, mm -hmm. when I was thinking about the topic for this video, which is identity, yeah. and identity means the sense of who you are and you're belonging to some sort of community or, so, so, or group. Usually mm -hmm. it's related to some sort of group. Mm -hmm. And for me, being a Ugandan medical doctor, that means I'm also black. So I became black, or I said identify as black, <laughs> when I moved to the UK. Yeah. And it happened around that time George Floyd died. Mm. Were you affected at all? Of, of course. <laughs> Devastated. Mm. I was in tears. I think there were so many emotions around that time. Mm. Um, yeah, just anger, mm. violation. Yeah. Just, yeah, feeling all the emotions. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> so that's when I realized I was a black person because I realized that to these other people, when they see me, they see a black person. Mm -hmm. They don't see a Ugandan medical doctor because well, I don't have also a Ugandan stamped on my forehead, but I do have my skin color yes. stamped like all over me. Yeah. So then I became a black person. Then I started wondering about my own kids' lives. I started getting worried. Like for them, they're going to probably grow up identifying as black British. Mm -hmm. which is fine mm -hmm. and um but then i was like i think i would love for them to also have the option of identifying as ugandan because you can't make them <laughs> become what you want mm -hmm. but at least if they have that option of identifying as ugandan then it might help with the identity crisis mm -hmm. and that's when i came across jan's channel jan is also a youtuber and i will link her channel down below and you can go and have a look yes jan has perfect perfect Luganda. In fact, this interview should have been in Luganda, but I can't keep up. <laughs> I can't keep up. And I was so impressed. So I found her at around that time when I was looking for resources to teach my kids about Luganda also. I was looking for resources online mm -hmm. and I wasn't really seeing any. And I searched a few things and Jan came up and there was a video in which she was talking to her dad and her dad was explaining how he helped to like instill these values in her. And I was so inspired and I would like to thank you, Jan, for sharing parts of your life with us. Yeah. And just by being yourself, you're inspiring a lot of people. Because when they see you, they're like, wow, even me, mm -hmm. if you're a kid, probably they're like, I can be like that. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a parent, you're like, you can aspire to that. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Although, obviously, the standards are so high. I don't know if I can keep up in terms of trying to make my kids like you. <laughs> But I think they did such a good job. Yeah. So that's how I found Jan. And then I wondered to myself, eh, what was it like for you in terms of identity? Mm. So, for example, when you describe yourself, you don't yet call yourself, like, it's not one of your things, I'm a, you're going to make a doctor. In fact, you are resisting that you're not yet, you're not yet <laughs> starting to work. But in terms of, if someone was to ask you, who are you, mm -hmm. what would you say? What would I say? Yeah. Definitely Ugandan is top of, you know, one up of, there on the list. Yeah. Um, I'm a young Ugandan, um, God-fearing. My faith is mm. an important part of my identity. Mm. Um, what else can I say? Mm. Yeah. Those are the main ones yeah. for you. Mm. I think the, most, the most important things to me in my identity are yeah. faith and culture. Yeah. And the rest follows. Yeah. Yeah. And 
do you identify as black British? Well, on a tick box, if they ask me, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not necessarily that. You do, it's not like the first thing. Ugandan is above black British. Yeah, so if I was describing myself, black yeah. British is not the first thing I would say. It yeah. definitely would be Ugandan. Yeah. Um, I think that comes to um, down to also being like quite in touch with my culture. Like I mm. ju just have a genuine love for it. I mm. want to be associated with it. Yeah. Um, so I will, you know, lead with that yeah. and be like, I'm Ugandan. And yeah. I love everything about being Ugandan. Yeah. So yeah. And I think that's unique. I don't think it's, I don't know, for me, I feel like it's a unique thing. It's not the common thing. Yeah. What do you think? What's your experience of other Ugandans who you've seen grow up here? Um, I feel like these days it is becoming more and more um, common for young Ugandans to really love um, their country and to be proud to represent where they're from. Mm. Um, but I would definitely say growing up, uh, where there were actually a lot less Ugandans here and mm. actually being Ugandan wasn't very cool. <laughs> it was, um, I feel like growing up, I've spoken yeah. about this on my channel. Yes, before. I watched that video. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, the cool countries to be from were either Jamaica yeah. or Nigeria. Yeah. Nobody knew even where Uganda was on our <laughs> <laughs> what are you about India? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's India, still I mean, happening. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but I feel like now, as um, being African in general is becoming more cool, people mm. are wanting to identify more with their roots and mm. just represent and yeah, just put their own countries on the map. Mm. Um, I've met a lot of young Ugandans who love being Ugandan mm. as well, um, and are, who are trying to like reconnect especially with learning the language mm. those who never really got that chance growing up yeah. in this country yeah um to learn the language many of them are like looking for ways to do so yeah. i actually teach some of my friends um luganda wow. yeah wow. they're like jan you need to teach us like we just yeah do you, do you like do classes or just by having conversations mm conversations but there was one friend my, her name is Hayley mm. um shout out Hayley mm. <laughs> um but yeah we had been doing some lessons together mm. um but life got busy mm. um but yeah that's definitely that's so cool yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's something I was thinking about doing like la like large scale as mm. well um just offering to people to teach them Luganda but I know there are people out there that do that as well they are right I've made a whole video on yeah. how to teach your kids Luganda. And in that video, I did mention Jan and her channel. Because um, she has a channel where she talks about, where she tells stories. Yes. Luganda folk tells. Yes. <laughs> and I will link that also here. And also I'll insert a clip where she's telling us about Manangi. Why don't you? I feel like that's what should hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from you in Luganda. Because in you can't Luganda. believe it. Eh? Uh, Tell us something. Sample them. Yes. <laughs> Um, Amanya actually, Zetjan Nachtende, Mochibi, Nedida Lukave. Naye Sisedanga Wapatagam, Bandinao Chano, Javaita Luganda Folk Tales, um, Kogo Mukutu, Tuteka Kengero, Nga Njabala, um, what else? Kuliko Njabala, Kuliko. Ah, oh, Nsanji, and yeah, did Nsanji, mm. and all those, um, yeah, childhood stories, um, which are really good. Okui go limi, definitely. Yeah. Abana batova, so yeah. okui gido ko. So please, yeah, yeah check it out. <laughs> subscribe, be inspired. Yes. <laughs> Comment below how inspired are you on a scale of one to ten. <laughs> For me, it's ten over ten, minus nothing, like they say. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's so cool. So my question was, yeah. do you think that it became cool to be Ugandan mm. or was it that you grew up and then you are the one who changed and actually you now consider it differently but it was always cool or it was always whatever it is even now? Mm. Or is it an age thing? I think it's a maturity thing. Mm. Definitely a maturity thing. Because um, the more you grow, the more appreciation I think you have for who you really are. Mm. But I feel like... I don't know, I don't really think I can say that because mm. I know there are some people who, you know, they, they never really get that connection. Mm. Mm. So I think yeah. it just has to be an internal thing. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also, because we believe in God, mm. we think also God has a lot to do with it. Mm. And because I feel like you will find that you will grow up in the same household with someone else mm. and they'll be completely different. They don't mm. want to know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. <laughs> yes. 
So I think there's also that. Eh? Yeah. But I think as a parent, you can do your best. At least introduce them to the language. Mm. At least introduce them to the foods. So that's mm. at least... Because what I always wonder about is that I feel like there's some sort of confusion that happens when you're a black child in in, in your home, you're like a zoo in Uganda, mm. but then you go out into the society, then there's it's like you're actually, you're not really Ugandan, like you're, you're black British. Yeah. And... I wonder also about when you move to, so you don't necessarily fit in entirely in the society out there. Mm. But then also, I wonder when you go to Uganda, do you feel like you fit in there as well? Because I hear someone else saying, no. no. <laughs> it's, and I think even when you try to go there and fit in, it mainly comes from the way others treat you. Mm. Like, mm. Um, and yeah, I think you've experienced it even like when you go to places to buy things, mm. but I don't I think know why. <laughs> I can't imagine why would they say that you jan? Because I feel like the issue is <laughs> the issue is I think language. Yeah. Or maybe dressing. Because dressing. you don't look you don't look like a foreigner. Yeah. So maybe dressing. Are you sure? No, yeah. To me I you look like know. a Really? You're mm. the first person to actually say that. Many people when they meet me they say which country are you from? Like they will never ever like guess Uganda. Like mm. they say I look more like Ethiopian or like Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah like Somalian. Yes. So, or Rwandan. Yeah. Do they tell you Rwandan? Yeah. Even yeah. Ugandans themselves. They say, mm. Oh but you must be mixed with something mm. something else. Mm. So even going to Uganda, um some people are in disbelief mm. even when I start speaking Luganda. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um but yeah. <laughs> so, because I also am told sometimes people think I look random. Mm, I see that. Mm. Yeah. But you're... But we're all Bantu. Like, yeah. there's a, there's, so if we look alike, it's mm. not... It's explainable because we're all Bantu. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, Bantu is a large group of many tribes mm. of which all of us mm. have a common word in two or moon. Two means a person. Mm. And we originally came from the Ethiopian highlands. Mm. and then migrated downward. If you did history in Uganda, you'll know this, or if you are paying attention in class. <laughs> we moved downwards, and then we kept on people stopping. So from Ethiopian Highlands, some stopped in Uganda. Yeah. Then they went down to TZ. Yeah. Then they went all the way down up to South Africa, up to the Zulu. So mm. the Zulu mm. are Bantu. So even mm. them, mm. they will have words that are similar mm. to our words, and mm. also we should look similar. Yeah. So to me, I feel like it's explainable. That's why some people say, oh, maybe you look around, you yeah. look like, of course I do, I'm a Muntu. Yeah, mm, we're, we're all Bantu. the same. We're yeah. all one people. We are. Yeah. It's so cool as well, I think, it, to, it, belong, yeah. <laughs> to belong to a bigger group, something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. And especially here where you're not seeing it much. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you as well, mm. when was the first time or is there a particular time that you realized you were black? The same way for me, I had like some epiphany moment mm -hmm. in those times when George Floyd died. Did you ever have anything like that or were you always, you always knew that you were black? I don't know. That's a good question. Growing up in a country which was very diverse, people of so mm. many different races, mm. obviously like I knew which group I fell into. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because the area I grew up in, in South London, was very diverse, mm. um, it didn't really affect me as much because there were so mm. many other black people that looked like me. So yeah. it was it was very normal to me. I think yeah. the only time it did start to really hit was um, like going into spaces where there weren't so many people that looked like mm. me. Um, yeah, I think, especially the, I, I was telling you there was a time yeah. where I moved schools out of a less diverse school, no, a out more of a diverse more diverse school. school to a less diverse school. Mm. And yeah, just fitting in was hard. And I found that I had to find people that looked like me mm. um, to feel more accepted yes. um, and to feel comfortable. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think then, I guess it's a lesson for parents out mm. there to expose your child because you might not be fortunate to live in London, because London is super expensive, we can't all live there. Mm. Um, so to try and expose your child to other people who look like them in other spaces. Mm -hmm. What about being Ugandan? Did you always know you were Ugandan? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. My parents made sure, they made of, sure that. of that. Yeah. My parents definitely made sure of that. Mami and Chalam Chibi, they are very, oh wow, they love Uganda so, so much. They're very involved um, with all the things that happen as well mm. here. So. Um, my mom is a Mukungu, which is like an ambassador for the Buganda Kingdom. Mm. Um, and th yeah, from a very, very young age, mm. they made sure that 
um, the language was a staple in the mm. household. Um, even from the music we would listen to at home. Mm. Um, of course, we were eating Ugandan matoke. Food, yeah. Yes, matoke, rumonde, all the Ugandan foods in the house. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think I don't remember a time where I did not mm. know that I was Ugandan. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, I think it's up to parents. It has yeah. to be parents. You have to insist. So I feel like I'm trying, but it's hard. Mm. It's so hard. Mm. Especially if you don't start it from birth. Mm. Now, like me, I didn't start it from like, the birth of the kids. I did not. And it was only when my two-year-old was two that I started trying to teach her Luganda, but she learned it. Eh? And even when she goes to school, she starts to teach like the people at school certain words. Really? And, yeah, That's so, so cool. It is. I shared this in a clip of her, actually, in a video that I did with Diana Luanga, mm. which I will link up here. Mm. And I think it's really cool. Um, and then the other thing is the food. So even with food, we said giving her matoke. Mm. Um, her favorite food is mchele. Wow. <laughs> it's her favorite food. That's yes. my favorite food too. It? We're going to be friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I feel like I'm trying, but at the same time, you can't know because the other one, my two year old, who I started talking to in Uganda from birth, mm. she's resisting. <laughs> she's resisting, yes. She wants to speak English. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. if she's two, she's two and a half. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it becomes very difficult. Eh? So you, the parent, you have to... And the thing is, it's easier to speak in English. Because now, like me, I, I think in English. Because mm -hmm. my first language was actually English. Mm. Which is weird. Do you uh, know what, though? I think my first language was English, too. Mm. I think it was. Um, and when I started talking, I think going to nursery... Mm when my parents could see that obviously i was putting words together sentences yeah. together um they would say so the english stops outside the house mm. you go to nursery speak all the english you want but once you come here yeah. this is a luganda only zone yeah so <laughs> i think from two and a half is yeah. a very good age yeah, so i don't I think persevere. yeah mm. you didn't start too late mm. at all I shouldn't in that. fact that's very early <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. very early um so i think you're definitely on the mm. right track to Thank you. yeah to getting them yeah. to be fluent it's just about perseverance though because it, it is perseverance it is hard so hard um <laughs> and they will rebel yes because, they don't think it's cool yeah naturally living in this country yeah you can't go outside and speak luganda to yes. people <laughs> or, or my daughter would try and mm. i noticed i told her gabby that person doesn't know luganda. understand yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> yes um so yeah, I think you, the parents, have to do so much so we can pick a leaf or a tree or just approach the whole tree actually from Jan's parents who did such a good job and they raised her. She's such a well-behaved girl, like Manan. She even came to visit and she came with stuff. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, they raised her. I told Jan, I mean, to 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 Jan and Galonsa, like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's culture. It is. Yeah. When was the first time you went to Uganda and what was that experience like? Wow, good question. Yeah. Um, the first time I went, I was actually really, really young. Mm. Uh, it was 2001. I was like three years old, mm. basically. Mm. Um, and I don't have much memory of that experience. Mm. Um, but I've seen pictures and like obviously my family yeah. tell me oh, the first yeah. time you came, it was like this. Um, yeah, I don't have much recollection That's of it. Fine. I'm sorry. What about how often did you go to Uganda? Or do you go? Um, I try to go at least either once a year or every other year. And is that helpful? Yeah. Do you like it? I do. <laughs> I think if I didn't like it, obviously, I wouldn't go back so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just... I, there's so much to love about Uganda. So yeah. much. Firstly, there's a lot of family over there that yeah. obviously you get the chance to connect with when you're there. Mm. Um, the weather... Yeah. The food, yeah. the soda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the soda tastes better. It, yeah, it's, it's so weird. Yeah. I think here, because you know about like the whole sugar, sugar tax. tax. And stuff, yeah. well, they, give us, and they give us all the sugar over there. They yeah. don't care about our health. <laughs> <laughs> you got anger, man. Do better. Protect your people. Yeah? Obesity is real. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes is real. Yes. <laughs> and yet also, they give kids, kids the soda. So there is a kid like advertised kids drink. drink. Yeah. But you know kids they I don't know, they do better with regulating sugar levels. It's when you get older that you become like at, like mm. higher risk of these mm. things like diabetes, your mm. body is not regulating levels mm. so well. So yeah, let the kids enjoy it. Let kids be kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any advice you have for parents? 
Yes. Mm. Um, I think just based on what my parents did mm. to, I don't know, to to produce a child who was born here and mm. also speaking fluent Luganda, I think it definitely starts in the home. It definitely starts from a very young age. Mm. Um, I'm a woman of faith, as I said, and the Bible says, mm. train a child in the way that they should go and they'll never depart from it. So mm. it's literally that training from childhood. My parents, as I said, in the home, Luganda, Luganda, no. In the home, it was an English free zone. Mm. And it was actually by force, I would say, <laughs> in the beginning. Mm. There was some resistance. Yeah. Um, but like looking back on it, yeah. it would def it definitely was worth it. Mm. It definitely was worth it. Um, so yeah, I would say just be persistent mm. with the language. When children make mistakes, as you obviously do learning yeah. a new language, don't laugh at them because that can be like really mm. discouraging. And like from my friends who never like learnt the language, I, I think that's one thing that they said mm. every time they'll try to speak, like people will just laugh at them, mm. which would discourage them. So yeah. yeah, just be patient with the children, be persistent with them, be firm with them as well. Um, and yeah. 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 And also encourage, I think, fun ways to learn the language as well. So, like, I watched a lot of Luganda movies. <laughs> but they were not child friendly. Those would be now Uganda. Mm, mm. I think some of them were. You would find some that that were not too bad. Because mm. um, it's like a lot of relationship stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And second wives and what's not. <laughs> Okay, yeah. maybe when they're a bit older. <laughs> yeah. I did start watching Binay Ghana after your recommendation. Oh, did you? Yeah, like one yeah. of your videos. And I was like, oh, actually, I think. Because when I realized I want to teach my kids Luganda, yeah, yeah. I was like, which Luganda am I teaching them that I don't know? <laughs> Let me try and learn. learn yeah. <laughs> so I started watching some Binay Ghana. How did you find it? I really, really enjoyed them. Yeah. I said, following all the series, like mm. it was a channel called Trust Films. Mm -hmm. And there was a show called Entunusi, it was the first one. There's yeah. another one called Akali Amagwa. Akali Amagwa. I think and I've seen that one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then now I got too busy now with life, but generally I really enjoyed them because I was in my last maternity leave mm. when I was a Cheddar content creator, so mm. yeah, I had mm. nothing much to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's the advice I would give mm. to parents. Um, yeah, be start from young, be persistent, and don't laugh at them, just be encouraging, yeah. and they'll pick it up. Yeah, they will pick up the language. <sighs> it's so hard. But it can be done. So just look at the look at the end goal. Mm -hmm. The end goal is you want a kid like John. Yeah, <laughs> not me being the standard. Yes. <laughs> it's like a standard um, SI unit. But um, you know what? If my parents can do it, then so can you. So yours. can you. Yeah, so can you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially, I think I would also want to encourage, even if you're one parent who um, maybe your husband or, or your wife or your other partner, doesn't know Luganda, you can still do it. Because mm. for me, my husband, who is the Muganda even, was not about the life. Like, it was me who was pushing for it. It was me who was speaking the Luganda. Yeah. And then, oh no, then I, keep him, I keep hearing him saying, that's not how they say it. I'm like, you say it then. <laughs> <laughs> um, say it like this. Eh? So slowly by slowly, he came on board. And now he also speaks to the kids in Uganda as well. That's amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, even one parent can make a difference. So. Absolutely. Mm, don't hound them about it. Just just do your part and they will learn by example. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we had so much to talk about and yes. I think we did a lot of this off camera. I think we that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's the <a> problem. <laughs> so um as far as what we remember or what I remember that what I talk about, I think this is it. And um yeah, make sure you go subscribe to Jan's channel. Yes, and please. um <laughs> thanks Jan for coming. Thank you I have for loved having, having me. you here. And um, yeah, make sure you like if you like the video Thumbs and up. subscribe. Yes. <laughs> Bye.